Hey y'all, it's Andrea here at VW Family Farm and today let's talk all about cabbages. How to start them, how to grow them, how to harvest them, and finally how to eat them. all different gardening zones here on YouTube so some of you are at different stages right now in your cabbage growing you may be about to harvest your cabbage or you could be all the way back at the beginning and just now setting out your plants or just now starting your seed you could be across the ocean from me and you're heading into winter and you're thinking about overwintering some cabbage uh, all different stages so let's just begin at the beginning so we're in here in the greenhouse you are more than likely going to want to start your cabbage seeds inside in a greenhouse in your house something like that about six to eight weeks before your last frost now cabbages can actually withstand temps all the way down to 20 degrees but more than likely you're going to want to start those seeds inside and get a jump on your season so that when you're getting towards later spring when it's starting to warm up just a little you're still having some cold weather you can get those plants outside so about six to eight weeks before your last frost you're going to start some seeds in some little cell cups or anything you want to in your house you can see these are getting a little dry this is just what was left at the end of our season and then about three weeks before your last frost hopefully you're going to have some little sprouts that look something like this and you're gonna go ahead and set those outside. So for us here in the South in Arkansas, for the past two seasons, we've been growing under what's called a frost blanket. That has totally changed the game for us. That means the beginning of the year, we can start seeds inside and we can get those outside usually like February or so. And then by the time our last frost hits, those things are huge. So a couple months later, we've done a lot of growing. We're almost ready to harvest. But if you don't have a frost blanket, you can't afford it, or you just haven't, haven't gotten one yet, then in our area, we would usually plant seeds inside, usually around February, and then we would transplant outside a few weeks later around March. So a good rule of thumb is plant them inside seeds six to eight weeks before your last frost, and then about three weeks before your last frost, get them outside. But in between those two times, harden your plants off. So what do I mean by hardening the plants off? Simply get those things outside. You might want to start bringing them outside in the shade uh, because you got to think you're taking them out of their very controlled environment to something that's very foreign to them and could shrivel them up and kill them right away. So you can bring this whole tray outside if you transplant out of this into bigger pots, bring those outside, start in the shade, gradually move to where you're in full sun, let them get the wind, that will make them a lot stronger rub your hands over them, all those things help strengthen up your plants. All right, next thing you need to do is get those plants in the ground. Uh, and a lot of you are probably already at this stage at this point in the year, uh, but you're gonna get those in the ground. You wanna mix them one to one with good compost, aged manure, uh, and sand, one to one with sand. Keep your soil loose and loamy, as well as cabbage are heavy feeders on nitrogen. Uh, poultry, aged poultry manure is the best compost for cabbages, but make sure it's not too hot. You don't wanna burn your plants. Make sure it's aged a little bit. You wanna make sure your soil is well drained. If you're planting them in a swampy area where the roots are just gonna sit in water, more than likely your heads are gonna rot on your cabbages as well. So a lot of growers recommend fertilizing them with nitrogen at the beginning of the season and then part way through. They are putting so much energy into developing all those leaves that they just suck up the nitrogen from the soil. Now, another important thing to know about cabbage, cabbage likes a neutral soil. So if you buy some nitrogen fertilizer, preferably organic nitrogen fertilizer, make sure that it is not gonna adjust your pH of your soil as well, because that is a real concern. But there are options out there for organic nitrogen that will not affect your soil pH. So check those out. One more awesome thing about cabbage, it is actually hardy in zones one through nine. So that is a wide, wide range of places you can grow cabbage. 
Another thing that is very important that you know about cabbage is cabbage is a magnet for pests. And there are also soil borne diseases that affect cabbages that can live in your soil. So it's very important for you to rotate your cabbage crop. If you are having disease problems with your cabbage, you probably want to rotate it. Okay, so let's talk about some places to plant cabbage and some places to not plant cabbage. You definitely want to plant your cabbage near beans and cucumbers, as well as lettuce, spinach, kale, and all members of the cabbage family are greatly helped by being planted by aromatic plants or plants that have many blossoms. So by that, I mean the things that smell wonderful. Dill, chamomile, sage, peppermint, rosemary, all of those types of things, as well as onions and potatoes. But there are four things you definitely don't want to plant your cabbage beside, and those are broccoli, cauliflower, strawberries, and tomatoes. So avoid planting those together. Those are not companions. The main reason not to plant beside broccoli and cauliflower is because they are in the same family. They're all brassicas and therefore they all share diseases and pests. So you definitely don't want to get those close together and uh, basically cross contaminate. Now let's say you don't have the money or the time or just the want to to invest in an insect cover. What are some things you can plant that will help you definitely avoid pests on your cabbage and your brassicas. Well, the four main things I would suggest are hyssop, thyme, both of which we have growing here on our farm, southern wood, and wormwood. Any of those are great to repel the white cabbage butterfly. We call it a lot of times the cabbage moth, but it is actually a butterfly. It is a pollinator. It is a helpful butterfly to have around, but it's larva that winds up hatching in your cabbage and your broccoli and cauliflower just totally ruins your whole crop. It's, it's such, it's so disheartening to go out to harvest your brassicas and they're full of worms. Okay, this is an old folk tale, but hey, if it works, it works. Old timers used to say, pick a bunch of elder leaves. So this is the elderberry plant and take those and pile those on your cabbages and you will repel pests. It's worth a try. Okay, let's talk harvesting. Okay, so if you are harvesting spring cabbage, you can go out there when it's time and you can cut off the head of the cabbage. You're gonna wanna keep these green leaves. You're going to discard the yellow ones um, that are yellowed and, and pretty bad looking, but you're gonna keep the green ones. That's gonna help keep your cabbage head fresh. You have a couple options at that point. You can put them in the shade if you have no other option. You can bring them in where it's cool and ideally you would put them in cold storage wrapped in plastic is the recommendation but my personal experience is a few years ago i read where you can wrap them in old newspapers and keep them at room temperature but in a dark place where it stays semi-cool um, it doesn't have to be um, cold or anything it can be on the cooler side of room temperature but definitely not where it gets hot and those kept for me for months the ideal conditions for keeping cabbages are 35 degrees and 95 percent humidity so that gives you an idea they like cold storage another important tip you definitely want to keep these away from apples and bananas and any other ethylene producing fruit or vegetable that as it ages it's going to release ethylene that will harm your cabbages okay so if you harvested the head in spring leave the roots and all the outer leaves intact and you will have a bunch of small heads of cabbage come up again. Pinch those off until there's only a few left, like three or four left, and let those get to the size of like tennis balls, harvest those, and eat those. They're delicious. After that for spring cabbages, remove all the plants and any that are healthy, you can go ahead and compost in your compost pile. If they're diseased, you need to get rid of them because you don't want diseases in your compost. And lastly, if you're harvesting fall cabbages, pull it up roots and all roots outer leaves the head everything harvest that head eat it as usual and store the roots and the outer leaves in your root cellar until spring it will put up more small sprouts like i told you about on the spring cabbage harvest those enjoy them leave the plant until fall it will go to seed and bam you've got your seeds for the next year and it's a sustainable crop all right guys i hope that helped you on growing cabbage like i told you earlier in the video the row cover has completely helped us out on growing brassicas. 
we struggle against the cabbage butterflies here and then the worms in all of our brassica crops and since using the row cover we've not had one problem our favorite place to buy that is grower solution our channel has a discount code there vwff10 if you're interested um, but there's lots of ways that i told you in this video to grow without the row cover so you don't have to do that but you're going to have to do some companion planting um, along the way you might have to find you some organic pest control methods um, things to spray on it because you probably are going to deal with pests cabbages are just a magnet for them as well as other members of the brassica family hope this helped you out you're probably about to harvest some cabbage uh, pretty soon i hope so we will end this with our favorite way to cook cabbage all right so here is literally our favorite way to eat cabbage we brown some homegrown sugar-free sausage and then we fry some cabbage and we throw it all together a lot of times i just put the cabbage over in with the sausage and just cook it all up in one pot but i didn't do that tonight because i actually have some onion and some carrots under there i'm gonna throw some uh, mushrooms on top put a lid on this and let it kind of simmer down and then i will throw it all together along with whatever spices you like i'll put garlic powder onion powder that kind of stuff but a lot of times it's literally cabbage and sausage all tossed together. It's a great low carb meal and it is delicious. So that's it. Everything you need to know about growing cabbage, how to harvest it, how to store it, and how to eat it. Hope you like this video and I will see you guys tomorrow. God bless. Ooh, doesn't that look good?